Hello, I am Samir from Bitnami and in this screencast we will take a look at VS Code and the extensions available for working with Docker, Kubernetes and Helm during the development life cycle of, a, of an application. Let's begin by bootstrapping an express application. And let's set up a git repo. Now let's take a look at Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is an open source, cross-platform and extensible text editor by Microsoft. Here you can see I have installed a Docker extension, the Kubernetes extension and the Helm extension for Visual Studio Code. Before we can continue, let's set up our Docker Hub username for the Kubernetes extension. With that out of the way, let's load our application in Visual Studio Code. Open folder. Our bootstrapped application does not include a Docker file or a Docker Compose file. So let's use the Docker extension to create these files. Open the command palette and type docker add docker files to workspace. Ours is a Node.js application and we want the port 3000 exposed. As you can see, the extension has created the docker file and the docker compose files. Let's commit these files to our project. VS Code has built in support for Git. So we can commit these changes without leaving the editor. So let's add this to our project. Using the docker extension, let's build the application image. We'll use the git sha in the image tag, so let's get it using, the, using git describe. We'll use this sha in our application image tags. Again, wrote the command palette and type docker build. We give a name for an image and the SHA. Once the image is built, we can launch the image using Docker Run. We need to select the application image. We can now load the browser and access our application. On port there you have it. We can also push the docker image to the docker hub using the docker extension like so. Type docker push and we select the application, the image we want to push. Now let's take a look at the Kubernetes extension. I have already created a Kubernetes cluster on GKE. To view the changes occurring on the cluster, let's set up a watch. We'll track the pods, deployments and services that are being created on the cluster. Using the Kubernetes extension, we can easily deploy our application to the cluster. Open the command palette and type Kubernetes run. Here we can see the my app being built. Then the my app is pushed to the docker registry and then a deployment named my app is created as can be seen here.
Now let's load the manifest that was used to create the deployment using Kubernetes load deployment my. Here we can see the various parameters that are used for the deployment, such as the name my app, the number of replicas, and the image in use. Let's save this manifest. Next, let's, let's expose our application so that we can access it. Open the command palette and type Kubernetes expose. Here we can see a service name my app being created. We can also load the manifest that was used to create the service use using Kubernetes load service my app. Let's save this file. Here we can see that the port 3000 is exposed. The Kubernetes extension scans the Docker file to determine the ports that should be exposed by the service and automatically exposes these services. To access our application, we first need to start the Kubernetes proxy using the kubectl proxy command. Let's create a new terminal and launch the command. Here we can see the proxy server is running on port 8001 of the local host. Let's copy this and enter it into our web browser. Next, let's look at our service manifest to find the link to our application. Paste it in the web browser. As you can see, we are now able to access our application through the proxy. And finally, let's see how we can update our application. First, let's commit the manifest file to our repo. Next, let's, let's update our application source. Make a minor change here. Let's commit these changes as well. Now we'll build the application image using the Docker extension. But first, let's get the git sha. Now let's push the image. The next step is to update the image name in the manifest. Save and now we say Kubernetes apply. Before the changes are applied, the extension will display the changes that are going to take place so we can apply the changes. If we take a look at the watch, we can see that the previous image is being terminated and the new updated image is being launched. Now that the image is launched, we can refresh our application and there we have it. The application has been updated. Similarly, we can also update the number of replicas that should be created. So let's give that a try. And again, we say Kubernetes apply. To remove this error, you need to delete this line.
we can now see three replicas of the same application being created in our cluster. Everything works as it is. Now, finally, let's take a look at the help plugin. The help plugin can be used to, to bootstrap our help and help chart. So, let's use the help plugin to create a new chart named My App. Here you can see the new chart directory has been created. Let's edit the values file and update the image name. Service name. The external port is three thousand, and the chart has built support for the ingress controller. So we'll use the ingress controller. So let's begin by initializing help in our cluster. Before we install our chart, let's install the ingress controller and install stable nginx ingress If we look at our watch, we can see the ingress controller is being set up While it is being set up, let's change the host to my app.local and install the app chart. Install name as my app set ingress dot enabled works true. The ingress controller has the following external IP. So let's set up a domain for this controller. Sudo ATC hosts. It resolves to my app.local. Now that our application has been deployed or the help chart has been deployed, we can access our application as myapp.local. There you have it.